what about the debt in the books? On a quarterly basis, you're spending around 50 crores or thereabouts as interest cost. Yes. So the debt in the book should be roughly around 2,000 crores, very, very approximately. You'll have a target in mind, right, uh, to bring down that debt? See, we're at the end of the CapEx cycle. Yeah. Your CapEx in Amravati and Ethiopia, mm -hmm. that took the debt up. True. Moving forward, we're not going to any CapEx plan. Mm. Your cash flows will become positive, and your debt will come down from one from that. Number two, getting rid of NPAs, non-performing assets. Yes. It, whatever we can get rid of. Supposing you get rid of the auto component, it will bring it down. If you're able to monetize some of the land, that will bring it down. True. Efficiencies, better working capital management, et cetera, all will bring debt down. So it's in the right direction. I don't think we're alarmed about our debt. Mm -hmm. uh, we might be 2,000 crores and not to let crows or like, but we want to be debt free over a period of time. How, how long? How long would that be? You want it's to be very, debt free? It's very yeah. difficult to say. I mean, today if I monetize the land tomorrow, I'll be debt free tomorrow. If it takes three years, it'll take three years, but the, the intent is there to be that, that direction. So give us some roadmaps, sir. You know, 2,000 crows? It's crores. very difficult. I think you're trying to pin me down on a timeline, mm -hmm. but I am averse to that. I'd rather undercommit and overdeliver. All right. Uh, and I also understand how land transactions work. Yeah. Um, you know, and I've seen how deals happen. I mean, I've done in '99. I did three deals: cement, filament, and uh, steel. Yeah. And one deal took 45 months to do, and one took four and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. The cement deal was done in literally four and a half minutes. So, I've seen the whole spectrum. The filament took two, two and a half years. So. All I can say is that we are in the right direction and we know what we have to do. I don't want to put a timeline on it. You're talking about free cash flows, right? When do we see that turn positive? Uh, you've said that FY20, that's the timing when you're looking yes, at? Yes, because you're at the end of the CapEx cycle now. So that's on the cards. Yeah. F positive cash flows in FY20 is on the cards with margin uptake as well. That's something that you've set out. We have seen it on your presentations as well. But that's on the cards. Yes. You know, a lot of your shareholders out there, for example, the institution holding, from the time in the last three years that we were talking about, the institution holding went all the way to around 30%. But in the last couple of quarters, we have seen that that's come down a tad bit. So there is some disappointment. It's right? not disappointment. What you see is disappointment. Some of them have had to do reallocation of their funds because of guidelines. Yeah. So they've had to rejig their funds. Absolutely. And Mr. Singhana, you've mentioned this in the past, that you believe that Raymond is going to be you know, a blue chip company some analysts on the street and a lot of uh, you know shareholders have compared it to the likes of Britannia to the likes of a page industries and they get you know real high multiples and high pedigree managements as well take us through your plan for that you know we're already at around 5,000 crores in terms of market capitalization as you said the market cap has doubled over the last couple of years so what's the growth plan how do you make this a blue chip company See, it again comes back to my same answer. You got to do the right thing for the company. So each business has a plan. Yeah. Now let me give you an example in the textile business. Whilst we have the legacy business, which is the fabric business, yeah. which grows at a particular growth rate, that doesn't satisfy us. Right. We have the new verticals, ethnic wear today. Right. Very big. We have a big potential now. I mean, if you take the ethnic wear market, it's a five thousand crore market. Mm -hmm. Now what? Can I get 20% of it? Is that a possibility? Why not? I'm, I'm dreaming 25%, 30%. That's what my dream is. Why not? If I have the brand, mm -hmm. I have the supply chain, I have the product, have a look at our product. I mean, you'll be surprised at the product range. You'll say, oh my God, Raymond is making this. I never dreamt of it. Come and see our trade shows. We are the, we are the largest trade show ever in the world today. Mm -hmm. 20,000 articles are given every season. Now, whether see, let me give you a historical experience that will explain to you my optimism. Right. Our shirting business used to be very, very small. And then we just put a focus on it. We put up a plant, we got the best products. And it's a 600 crore vertical today. Now if shirting can do that, we're seeing it with linen. Mm -hmm. Linen has gone from zero, I think this year we'll do six, seven million meters of linen. And we'll be the largest OTC linen brand. I mean, we sell almost uh, 15 million shirts across the counter. So we actually sell more fabrics that get converted into a shirt than the ready-made sales of all our brands put together. You take made to measure as a vertical. It took five years to prove the concept, mm -hmm. but then the growth is exponential. True. Now, if you see this lounge that you're sitting in, this is the next level. Now here, we're selling jackets for 15 lakh rupees. A Vikuna jack is 15 and a half lakh rupees. So we're changing the game everywhere. 
You take Khadi. Why can't Khadi become a 2,000 crore business? It's a fabric by the people of India for the people of India. And nobody else can own this proposition. I mean, the Khadi ad that we did in the first 30 hours got 16 million hits on, you, on social media. I just woke us up and said, hey, what's going on here? Why are we doing 10, 20, 30 crores of Khadi? Why can't we do 2,000 crores of Khadi? Right. Is there a market there? For every suit I sell, I can sell so many trousers so that I can sell so much shirting. Why can't I triple my shirting business today? Yeah. But if the concept is proven. So there are multiple growth options. Some take X time, some take Y time. You know, Mr. Singhane, the, uh, the picture that you're throwing to us is if I put it in cricketing parlance, you've got the best players in the dressing room. Now they need to come out there and all play the innings of their life. So no one's ever you know, questioned the players in the dressing room. But how do they come out there and play that one innings that takes Raymond to the next level? The game has started. You're going to have to wait and watch. You were telling us about the e ethnic wear, and you're telling us about a store like this as well. How many such stores do you want to you know, set up? So this, all, one, yeah. this one went from concept to completion in 45 days. Okay. And that's the speed we're working at. Ethnic wear, you know, it's an evolution. I don't want to really tell you exactly what we're doing, mm -hmm. but I think there's a big headroom there. I mean, if, if, you're, if it's a 5,000 market, 5,000 crore market size for ethnic wear, even 10% is 500 crores. And today, what's the size of it? 30, 40 crores for us. OK, you know, you were t telling us about we have a big general election that's coming up uh, in the next year itself. Uh, your view in terms of, you know, the government initiatives, you were telling us, I've read in the past as well, the Make in India theme, that's what fit into uh, the Amravati project uh, as well. So the measures that the government has put on the table, and what more would you like in terms of support coming in from the government? See, I think one of the major issues that the government needs to look at is, is the labor laws. Mm. Uh, it's a difficult one, yeah. but the minute you bring some discipline into labor laws, you make the industry more efficient. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a crying need of the hour. Right. What will happen in 2019, I'm not a political pundit, I, I have no idea. I will go and cast my vote and whatever happens, Raymond as a company will continue to run and do business in India. Okay, all right. Uh, you know, another factor that's been uh that's been playing on the minds of many, is that Mr. Singhani has been that flamboyant person with uh, you know, the fast cars, maybe the jets, all that's behind now. Are we looking at value creation? And more importantly, it's separated, right? From the business, See, the business is separate, and personal expenditure, that's separate. That's completely separate, but my image is what you guys make it. <laughs> I guess you decided to focus more on my business now, so I guess that's where the focus is. But having said that, I'm also now on the FIA internationally. My passion for cars is not going to go. I don't hide it behind anybody. I enjoy my cars, so what's wrong with that? I have a passion. Everybody has a passion for something. Sure. I am now passionate about doing a lot of good for motorsport for India. Yeah. I have been honored by being elected onto the World Motorsport Council. Uh, can it do business for the group? Of course it can do business. It's, it, uh, we already started getting business in various aspects because of my association with FIA. Uh, because it opens up doors, you meet people, you, that's what... So it's, I think the other part of me, you know, on a fundamental level that I got in, a lot of my time is going into FIA. Right. And it helps me continue with my mission of professionalizing the company. I'm not sitting in the air. I'm not insecure. I have enough things to do. You know, most people don't give up because they don't know what they'll do with it. So I might as well drive my cars and, and get involved with the FIA and do all my passions in life and let the right people run the business. Well, you know, so we perfectly take that point. But that's all on a personal front, right? That's not mixing the business, isn't it? So, you know, you've got to have your time for your business. You need to dedicate as much or as little time as required for your business. Yeah. Once you have decided what you want to do with the business, we have clearly professionalize the organization. We have clearly set targets. There's a whole, we've set the whole governance structure into place. And then there's time for me to do the other stuff. If I was not doing other stuff, I would continue to be making their life miserable here. And you know, life is about finding a balance between business, family, and personal. I'm not apologetic about it. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I think I found myself a great balance. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Mr. Singhania. Thanks so much for speaking to Thanks. us here on CNBC TV 18. Well, the broad takeaways then from what Mr. Singhania had to say was that he's looking to enhance shareholder value. He's looking at debt reduction from here 
And if you find a buyer for the non-core assets, well, they're yours. They're on the block. CNBC 